Welcome to the Firebelly Social Show. We're focused on talking to food and beverage brands that are on a mission to make the world better. Hey, 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 everyone. Duncan here with another episode of the Firebelly Social Show. It's a very special show where we chat with founders and leaders of mission-driven food and beverage brands. So these are people that are a very unique breed. They're out to change the world. And that's what I love best about it. So thank you for tuning into this latest episode where we're going to have uh, Laura Jacobson, founder and CEO of Ride Energy. So I've been very, very excited about this for uh, a little bit. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Firebelly Marketing. At Firebelly, we help mission-based food and beverage brands bring people closer together through social media. So if you're ready to set fire to your social media to create more community and excitement around your food and beverage brand, go to firebellymarketing.com to learn more. So with no further ado, I'm so excited to have uh, Laura Jacobson from Riot Energy. Not only is she a founder, she's an amazing athlete. She brings an athlete mindset to, th to things and she ain't happy with small thinking. She's here to bring clean energy drinks to the world. And hey, if she overthrows the big energy drinks while she's doing it, all the better. Welcome, Laura. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. So excited. Now, you started as a as, as a competitive athlete. And and uh, let, let's just start a little bit there, because I think that's critical to your approach. Like, what, what were you doing? And more importantly, where were you doing it? <laughs> So I, it is my personality. It started at a very young age. I was a competitive ski racer. So I spent all the fundamental development years of my life in competition um, against the mountain, against other racers. So I think it's really been a gift. Um, it's like I always say, it gave me an athlete's mentality. So that means you know how to to practice. Yeah, you know when you're in competition and how to angle to win and you know, when you lose, how to pick yourself back up and get in the competition again. And we're in a fierce category of energy drinks. So I definitely need to maintain that athlete's mentality all the way. And generally all entrepreneurs do. So I think it's just really that balance of uh, you never quit. You always keep going down the journey to find a positive outcome. And this isn't your first outing. You, uh, um, the, the way our production team described it, you took on the C-suite at Pinkberry. And uh, now you've launched in not now like uh, eight years ago launched your own your own brand Riot Energy. You know, tell us about. Let's just get into it. What's different about Riot Energy? <laughs> Riot Energy. We're against the status quo. So I wake up out of bed every day because I believe big energy is underserving consumers. So our objective is to get out there with high integrity ingredients that the same amount of functional energy can come from natural ingredients. Uh, and the energy drink category is a bunch of Me Too products that are filled with chemicals and sucralose as an artificial sweetener. And while they have spent years trying to pose zero sugar as a better for you offering, the zero sugar is still full of sucralose. So we offer an energy drink that has zero anything artificial. We don't use any artificial sweeteners. We don't add any sugar. We use real fruit. And our objective is to put the choice on the shelf for consumers to decide if they want a better ingredient energy drink. And we know if we get on the shelf that they do decide that they want to try us and that we have a good repeat rate because they're getting the same functional benefits that they would from any traditional energy drink. But they're also getting ingredients that they don't feel guilty about consuming, which is sort of the human insight of all energy drinkers is they they don't feel great about what they're consuming every day. And I think the gift of Riot Energy is that the way we've brought together the ingredient um, profile of the product, we also are delivering zero taste sacrifice. So people love the taste of Riot Energy. It's light, refreshing, has a crisp finish, and it's full of flavor. So we've eliminated some of the taste dissatisfiers of other energy drinks with a syrupy finish or too sweet or have an aftertaste. You don't get any of that with Riot Energy. I mean, uh, Laura, I love all your terminology. Uh, the human insight, ingredient profile, zero taste sacrifice. I mean, this all just immediately connects. Um, let me, I mean, is this, this has to be part of your self-described approach of going all in. <laughs> yes. 
Definitely. Look, it's been a journey to refine every step of the way where we've gotten to. Um, but it is, we're all in and delivering a better ingredient energy drink. And it's for us, I think the the thing we're most all in on is listening to the consumer base and being nimble to adjust what our offering is to what they are demanding and not being a status quo kind of me too energy drink that comes out into the market with a different marketing wrapper. That's not what we're doing. The next generation energy drinker is demanding better ingredients. And Riot Energy is serving those customers knowing that they will deselect out if the ingredient profile isn't what they want to put into their body. And the next generation is far more educated on wellness than generations before them. And at the same time, we're finding that there are a lot of dissatisfied customers who are category users who stepped into the category thinking that there were better for you offerings um, and are getting self-educated and finding out they're actually not as healthy as they thought that they were. And so as a result, you know, they're willing to try something else when we're on the shelf because we are meeting that simple, clean ingredient deck that they're looking for. And when they try it, they're really satisfied and they continue to come back. That's a that's a, a beautiful approach. And I love the fact that it's uncompromising. Even, even the can is uncompromising because it says right on it, um, you know, for our listeners, you go check it out at riot.energy. Uh, it says it right there, you know, as big as the logo, 100% plant powered. I mean, that's, uh, that's super amazing. So, I mean, uh, let me ask you this real quick. I know they're all... Uh, equally loved by you, but which one of the flavors is your personal favorite today? Oh, I definitely have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the consumer mix, they're very even as far as sales mix, uh, but my favorite citrus, I'm a lemon, lime junkie, anything that has any kind of lemon head or meringue or ultra citrus flavor is right in my alley. So that's our green can. That's amazing. I have tried the cherry watermelon and I really love it. I'm looking forward to trying the mango. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, I, I love you. You know, at Firebell, we call it big facts. I love the fact that you're just, you're, you're speaking the truth and you're saying what people are thinking is like even many popular, well thought of, you know, energy drinks or better for you drinks. There's a lot of like uh, secretive information, you know, whether the sweeteners are are not good for you and mimicking uh, other products or um, there's things you can't pronounce on it. There's potentially damaging things in there. There's, you know, the good old uh, natural flavors added. There's all those kinds of things there. You know, for someone like you who is determinedly standing against that kind of thing, like what are you seeing in the market both towards your product and, you know, for some of these others? I mean, I think we're here to make a difference in health and wellness. And that's why we started the company. This came out of my own personal need of a daily routine and a little serendipity. I was looking for a different source of energy and mix some stuff together. And it became right energy because I was looking for simple, clean ingredients. So I think the thing that we stay focused on is staying you know, committed to where we started, which is simple ingredients. And as we look at the category of energy drinks and quite frankly, beverages in general, as people have gone to counteract what has now been demonized as sugar, it has been substituted with things that are not that great for you. And so for us, we see a market opportunity, not only in energy drinks, but in beverage where we're staying true to the integrity of delivering, you know, natural ingredients with the same functionality. Um, and I think for us, it there's never any question in that. And so I think staying true to up-leveling ingredients and the quality behind our product is something we'll never waver from. And as a result, we're highly differentiated. So we're in fierce competition. These brands are admirable. They're, there's nothing negative to say 
about what has happened in the category. They're big brand builders, you know, they they're media companies. They're like I said, it's fierce competition. But our our advantage is listening to what consumers want and being nimble enough to respond and have the foresight to see what they want as the category continues to grow. So the category will double by 2030. We're in 2024. Um, it will double in size from roughly just over $24 billion to $50 billion. That's a lot of consumption. And we see a sea of all the same product. It's the same product with different marketing wrappers in a can. And Riot Energy is the only one out there challenging the status quo to deliver better ingredients that are demanded by the next generation consumer. And it is that differentiation that will allow us to continue to grow a massive brand and get share in the category because that growth in consumption is not happening with a bunch of Me Too products. Better for you is growing at a faster rate. And the brands that respond to better for you in an authentic man manner will be the ones that rise ahead. And that is right energy. We're against the status quo. We'll always stay ahead and we will always be anchored in wellness. I mean, I, 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 I have to tell you that even as a founder myself, I love what you said because we we start with a certain intention and a certain vision, you know, and a certain uh, mission. And you mentioned simple ingredients. And how often do we hear stories about, yeah, you know, I had to do something differently because of the board, or I had to, you know, the investors were demanding this or that and the other. I hear it in tech all the time. God bless them, but I hear it in tech all the time, right? It's like you'll never be able to stick to your vision once we get investors. And I want to just thank you for sticking to that. I mean, that's better for all of us out here. And so, you know, you're making the world better by sticking to that. Uh, well, I think you bring up a really good point, and that's something a lot of conversation doesn't happen around. Building a brand from the inside out it means everyone you bring around the brand has to be aligned to the vision from the very beginning. And I think if you put the consumer first and you make sure that every, you, that's not to say you don't change or listen or pivot, but there's some deep values that brands are based on that, you know, shouldn't be manipulated. And as a founder, it's it's our job to make sure that from a capital perspective, we're getting investors that believe in that. Uh, from a retail perspective, that we're getting buyers to understand what the brand is about and why it has a role in the category, that employees are excited and enthused to share the word of what the brand is about and that the consumer gets it. There's a lot of people involved <laughs> to figure out how to deliver the brand, even it doesn't matter how simple the message is. And, and for us, you know, our message of zero artificial anything is really a simple thing to hear, to comprehend. But when you go into delivering it and educating it, you got to have everyone around the table signed up. And and we've we've had to make some changes from our, our capital structure and investors who are invested. And, you know, I think the the bravado of founders to deliver highly differentiated products is no different than the bravado they should bring to make sure they've got the right community around the brand. Bravo. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I, I just want to emphasize two things you said. Uh, one, you know, the, the bigger picture one is that you have to have the right community around the brand, whether it's external or internal. But I think um, a lot of times we forget the value of the internal community. You know, yes, you have some raving customers and fans. You know, yes, they're maybe the um, the, the uh, investors or the capital providers are on the same page, but are the employees on the same page? Or it's the other way around, the employees are on the same page, but the external, external audience isn't on the same page. And what you're saying is it's all gotta be lined up and community has to be built throughout. Yeah, and it's constant maintenance. And look, we can I I can improve on a lot of stuff related to that, but I think it it takes a lot of time. And I think one thing I've learned over the past couple of years is making sure we as founders and leaders of these brands and companies have the time to to make sure that's being nurtured. I wanted to ask you, you just said listening to the consumer, foresight, 
you know, maybe a little bit of instinct there too, and being nimble. Um, that is easier said than done by some companies. And you see, I mean, I don't know sometimes if the, the founder knows that, hey, you know, I've made the wrong mistake. Um, you know, I've I've created a high, let, let's use let's use an example without naming anyone. I've I've created an esoteric product that really appeals to someone with a higher um knowledge of of what good products and and minim, minimal clean ingredients are and then they go into walmart you know and i mean there's just a mismatch there but there's that massive carrot right of walmart and i mean that's definitely not complying with any of those three principles you you stated they're not listening to the consumer because that consumer is not buying at walmart in my opinion you know there's no foresight there because a walmart uh, equation is challenging for any brand and then it's not easy to be nimble to get out of walmart <laughs> yeah i i think you bring up a good point um but i think for uh, at least in my own experience at riot energy partly being nimble is being able to understand how to adapt your vision to impact more people so I I wake up out of bed every day because I believe I can literally improve the health and wellness of individuals because of the consumption of energy drinks being so frequent. The amount of times that they're picking up something and putting harmful ingredients into their mouth is high, right? So every time I substitute even one occasion, that improves someone's life. And so for for Riot Energy, I've always had the vision we should be a household brand. And in order to be a household brand, our nimbleness is understanding how to manage that bridge from people who already live a life of being healthier to main to bridge the mainstream of getting clearly communicating to people who maybe aren't totally satisfied, maybe know they're not doing something right, maybe know that they're not totally committed to health and wellness, but why would they want the beverage? And so for Riot Energy, the zero taste sacrifice is a huge deal because if we taste better and we're light and we're refreshing and we're full of flavor and they can feel good about what they're putting into their body, we keep them, right? But the key is being nimble enough to keep the messaging really clear and really simple that you can bridge into the mainstream and then bring retailers along with you that offer, you know, or that attract more mainstream customers. And so for Riot Energy, the big learning that we had as a like really tangible example is on our can right now. And previously we've been a hundred percent plant powered energy. Well, anyone in food and beverage is going to understand how we got to that messaging because plant powered was big messaging and, it, when it first arrived on the market, it meant cleaner, simpler, but that messaging got eroded and confused when more and more dialogue came out around other meat substitute products that weren't clean and weren't offering high integrity ingredients. And so we as Riot Energy said, we have two problems. The one problem is this clean, clear messaging, 100% plant powered, it doesn't really communicate what it used to communicate, which is in two seconds, can someone understand that we're made from better ingredients because of the cultural dialogue that's happening. And so, and then we had another strategic leap that we needed to make, which is how do we get mainstream category users to entertain drinking a riot energy because you know it just tastes great it's just a good alternative and it's better for you and so we had a bridge to that mainstream well 100 percent plant powered was a healthy person's messaging so we've now just pivoted and coming onto the shelves at the moment we speak is just on the production line now is we've changed the bottom of our messaging to zero artificial anything and so Really, that those kind of pivots and be having the clarity of not only understanding what you set out, but is it actually still doing the job you think you set out to do? Things change, culture changes, dialogue changes, PR for other food and beverages changes, and you've got to pay attention to what's happening with these messages. And then 
consumer understanding changes and what somebody perceives to be true is much more important than even if it's not factually true. And plant powered began to get a halo of not necessarily standing for simple, clean ingredients. And our job at Riot Energy was when somebody walks up to the shelf, our differentiation is our ingredients. And in two to three seconds, we need to communicate that faster than anyone else. So we found words that apply to a bigger population of people that said the very same thing. I mean, I, I, um, I'm i floored about the thinking. That's so that's so great. Um, and I think like um, that is, that is something I've seen a lot of and I've had some guests that I've talked about as well is that, you know, there's the few companies that, you know, F it up for everyone else. And now everyone has to either pivot or decide how is my approach and messaging going to address this sort of misnomer and um, maligning. Um, so thank you for clearing that up. I want to ask you clearly innovation, not just with messaging, you know, but even to the core with the product is such a key part of what you do. Just give us a little bit of an insight into what, what that's like. Uh, into what the innovation that we've created? You know, the innovation, how innovation is approached at your at your firm. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think it's pretty simple. <laughs> at, our, at Riot Energy, everyone who's involved in the brand, we appreciate everyone's insight. So I think innovation comes from understanding the consumer. Um, so I, what, what we try to do is as much information that comes back to us, all information is super important in these emerging years. So as an example for that, when we, we have area managers who are out in the field all the time, talking to store level buyers, intercepting consumers at the shelf. We as founders still go into the stores and make sure we understand what the shelf looks like and that we're intercepting customers as well. Uh, we as founders still read every message that comes in through our Instagram channel, every message that comes in through TikTok and any kind of social media. In our inbox, because we put email on our cans, is unbelievable the feedback that we get in email, which is read by the founding team as well. So that all of that feedback has helped us be nimble in making really incremental changes to our messaging, to our product, um, to our name from T Riot to Riot Energy. We are about to launch a marketing campaign where every message in the campaign came from consumers that back channeled back to us. And we were like, wow, that's a really clever way to say what we're about. Um, Duncan, I love your name, you know, Fire Belly, because that that is exactly what we're about is people who have a fire in their belly, who challenge a status quo, who are individuals that are going out to pursue their passions, whatever that is. It could be an athletic thing. It could be a music thing. It could be a, a political thing. It, it, it could be a poet. It doesn't really matter. What matters is we're giving them the energy to be themselves. And so the more we understand our consumer and these early adopters and why they chose in an extremely loyal category, why they choose Riot Energy is absolutely crucial. So I think, look, we've gotten some feedback. Should you guys be spending time reading your Instagram messages? I mean, I, to me, that's innovation. Innovation is I want to understand my customer more than anyone else understands that customer so that I know what to do with the product I have and what new products to deliver them in the future. That That is really inspiring. And thank you for um, your compliment on the name. It's, it's interesting timing. We just actually recorded a little LinkedIn um, video about why I named the company Firebelly. So that's really great. It's of oh, course, yeah, it's a Native understand. American term for, co for courage, but um, that is, you know, there is, there is something to be said, and I know that the efficiency people and the people say, you know, buy back your time, delegate that to someone else. There are a lot of things that I believe founders should never delegate. You know, it's like you gotta, you gotta have a very good pulse of what's happening. Otherwise, as a leader and as a person that's meant to see what's coming down the road, how can you do that if you don't know what's happening today? Yeah. 
just as a one little anecdote on our journey thus far, um, we, as I mentioned earlier, we used to be more of a functional beverage and a plastic bottle that required refrigeration. It was a perishable beverage as well. Um, so we're a husband and wife team and we each went out and we did each about a hundred demos and we were nationwide at Whole Foods at the time. And so we took a month and we each did a hundred demos and we interacted with consumers that were interested in our product. And more importantly, we interacted with store level buyers in the Whole Foods markets who were so, have so much knowledge that to offer um, early, early founders and entrepreneurs. And really, you know, we were uh, in the wrong, I always say we were the emperor dressed in the wrong clothing. Like we were perishable. We needed to be shelf stable. We were in a plastic bottle. We needed to be in a can. You know, we were not carbonated. We needed to be carbonated. Like we knew people were using us for energy. So how could we tap the market? There's not one thing has changed about the vision of the product, the benefit of the product, who's using the product. But through those interactions, we were able to understand how to pivot some of the packaging and product attributes to really connect with what we had to find as our vision. And so that's probably the biggest pivot we've made in our, in our journey. And it's been a really effective pivot. And I think sometimes it, it is that work. It's just staying connected to can the consumer and listening that I think brings, again, not to be repetitive, but the biggest innovation for brand. No, but I love it. I, I think that, you know, the fact that you're looking at Instagram messages, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, I must start doing that. You know, um, I'm always asking the people on our team that are, you know, out, outward facing with our own communities, like, what's happening? What are you hearing? It's like, well, yeah. someone is making fun of us for doing this and that. It's like, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's, there's going to be haters. So, you know, oh, just for sure. look, for, look, look for the, See, but the, the bad comments are just as important as the good comments, right? There's understanding both sides is super important. I wanted to ask you, uh, what are you excited about that's coming? I think you already mentioned it. it's the new, the new uh, packaging or the new labels uh, with uh, nothing, zero, zero, zero artificial things added. Yeah, uh, I am super excited about about that. Um, I, I think, though, what I'm most excited about is uh, the momentum. I, I'm most excited that we remain the most differentiated offering in the category. I'm excited about some strategic partnerships that we've been able to secure um, with strategic uh, investors that have great perspectives that you know are additive to our business. I just think. Now is the time. We've had a lot of learnings. We've made a lot of pivots. We've been really nimble. And I'm excited to have the, the highest level of confidence I've ever had that we will we will shift the category and we are relevant and will drive the next generation of energy drinkers. And there's nobody doing what we're doing. And we just have to stay steady. I mean, I, I must say that that's even reflected on your Instagram um, feed. I mean, uh, it's all over the place in a good way. You know, you show manufacturing, you show the labeling, you show skateboarders, you show, you know, it being um, the consumed in a really fancy cocktail glass. It's on the move. I mean, you can see the energy even in the feed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we're just getting started. So I think we've been very fortunate that a lot of our, you know, social is uh, user generated and we're not paying for that. We're not getting ambassadors. These are real live consumers who want to actively be a part of the brand that are tagging us that, you know, we're just replaying how they're using the brand and it is, it's on brand, it's relevant. And, and quite honestly, it's what people trust today is real consumers and their real experience is more effective than Ooh, us looking yeah, salesy. I love, I love what you're saying. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I want to make sure I cover this piece. Um, where all, because I have a couple of other deep, deep questions for you, but before I forget, where all can people find your product? Yeah, we're uh, nationwide uh, in over 4,000 stores right now, heavily saturated in the natural category. Uh, we're in grocery stores like Meyer, Fresh Time, Moms, Hagen, 
um, you know, some of regional grocery stores. Um, and then we're just now kicking off into convenience. So in 2024, uh, west of the Mississippi, you'll see the brand expanding in convenience. Um, we're kicking off right now with a convenience store located in in the Milwaukee area, actually called Open Pantry that we're super excited about that it's going to help us define our playbook. And so I think for people who are west of the Mississippi, you'll start seeing us a lot in those impulse locations. I'm so excited to hear about the convenience store piece. Uh, I mean, I think that um, we have an innovation uh, channel at our company that's run by one of my colleagues, uh, Reagan Heron, but she was pointing out how 7-Eleven is actually developing their own energy drinks in-house. Yeah. Good for them. But I kind of feel like as a consumer, it, most of the cases, when you go into a consumer, into a, into a convenience store, you're not going to get the, the best choices with energy drinks. It's the same old, same old. So I'm so excited that you're going to be doing that. Uh, it's the same old, same old everywhere, unless Riot Energy is there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a riot. Um, let me ask you this. How, you know, you have uh, spent your life, you know, being um, so motivated. You are so driven. How, how do you take care of yourself? Well, I should say, how do the two of you take care of yourselves? Well. Thank you for saying that. First of all, um, I, I appreciate that. I take that as a huge compliment. Uh, it also has the added benefit of being very true. <laughs> uh, so how do we take care of ourselves? I I think probably the first and foremost thing is we have dogs. <laughs> so we love our dogs and uh, that forces you to be walking every day. So a lot of the think time I think that we get to have is you know, as we're during the day, just those quick walks out that gives you that 15 minute break where you're able to reflect and connect some dots. And I guess like there's shower time, there's probably dog time. So take advantage of it. Like if you have a dog, get out there and walk it. It, It's where some of our best ideas have come from. Um, And I think it's really important. I, as we started the journey, we veered away, even actually as my time in the corporate world, that's how Riot Energy got started. I veered away from my health and wellness. But I think generally, um, if I had to create a list, I guess it would go like this. We get lots of sleep. We try to get good sleep. We have dogs that keep us balanced and we keep walking. We stay active. We lift hard just lifting heavy things every day and we try to eat clean and get our protein like (laughs) that's about that's about it it's very simple principles but putting them into play in your own way every day um is a lot harder than you imagine and i recently became a push-up addict so well let me tell you i i want to give you the uh, 145 plus guests award like you are the first guest that has all the basics down. I mean, that is amazing. (laughs) Sleep, nutrition, uh, hydration, uh, lifting weights, relaxing. Um, You you will not believe the majority of the founders that come on will complain about how they don't sleep well, they don't eat right, they're always taking shortcuts. So you, it's a a highly dubious distinction, but you win the award. (laughs) I'll take it. It, I think it took (laughs) me probably seven years to calibrate correctly, but, um, but we're on, we're on a good, good, good habits right now. Let me, let me ask you uh, uh, this. Um, I I think you've already said it, but I got to ask. Uh, what, you know, if for the people that are listening out there, you know, what does success mean to you? And, you know, how, how do you measure it? I, for me, success is the level of impact that I have in people's lives. Uh, That's really it. Um, so for me, how does that get defined? I think the first is, am I energized every day? Like I, I love what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we have the added benefit of offering an energy drink. So we get to drink energy drinks every day. So that's good. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, I think what we have to do is really meaningful. And there's some communities that I want to make sure that we get a chance to do it for that are specific, like the military. I don't think the U S military should be drinking the energy drinks that they're drinking right now. I think we could do better. Um, 
So I think for that passion is really there. I, am I energized to live out the vision every day? A hundred percent. My husband and I both are. We, we think it's really meaningful. It's very needed. And we get to impact the health and wellness of people. That's awesome. I think also for the team of Riot Energy, whether you're a full-time employee or whether you're a partner, we've been through some challenging times. But we try to make sure that we're a positive force and everyone that we interact with, that we are energy givers. Uh, that's what we do every day, whether it's through an energy drink or whether it's through our spirit doesn't really matter. Um, and so whether it's, you know, a third party partner or who is an extension of our team or the team itself, but I think generally the brand is here to make a difference. And every time we have somebody post or email in, that is for us the biggest measure of success. When I'll give you a real tangible example uh, that happened about a month ago. We have a, a couple who are consumers of Riot Energy who found the brand about seven months ago or so. They've been deployed to an active area uh, for the U.S. military. It's undisclosed where they're on the battlegrounds. They're planning their wedding. They're both in the military. They're planning their wedding for December 1st in the Chicago area. And they emailed us and said, you have impacted our life so much. We want to invite you to our wedding. <laughs> so we were like, is this for real? And it was paragraphs on what Riot Energy has done for them, how it's changed their lives. They didn't think something like this could exist. And we get lots of emails back from people that the most rewarding emails we get, and we do hear this often is, this is so simple. Why hasn't it existed before? I can't believe this hasn't existed before. What? Like, how, how come somebody else didn't think of this? Like, and that's the beauty of what we're doing is it's really authentic and simple. And people really appreciate it. So um, in case you're wondering, yes, we are going to their wedding. Of course, we got invited to somebody's wedding. Are you kidding me? But I think that that for us is the value is, are we energized? Are we giving energy? How are we impacting people's lives with this brand? And it, in a category that has often been about adrenaline, has often been about fear, has been about risk. You know, we're we're not about that. We are the riot. We are about challenging the status quo, making the best of yourself, you know, being that individual that is not afraid to go out and venture about what you want to tackle on, not when someone's prescribed for you to tackle on. I mean, what what an inspiring conversation. Um, Laura, thank you so much. Um, what what an incredible journey. And um, I I've, I've learned so many great uh, phrases today that I am, uh, you know, with your permission, going to co-op. So I love, I love, <laughs> I love your, I love your worldview and um, your your mission. And thank you for making the world better. So, uh, and to all our listeners, you know, hey, ditch the chemicals. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's get real fuel in our bodies with you know nothing artificial. Um, and so be be sure to check out Riot Energy, Riot dot Energy to join. I mean, let's say it's a movement. So, uh, you know, join the movement. Um, thank you so much for being a guest today. Oh my gosh. Thank you for letting us make some noise about what we're about. Um, and we'll, we definitely need to load your offer, office with Riot Energy. So we'll follow up on that. But uh, probably the most important term of the brand is when we we sign off, we say right on. So keep riding on, Duncan. And thanks for the time. I really appreciate it. Riot on. Let's be loud about it, too. Thank you all for tuning into the Firebelly Social Show. If you love today's episode, make sure you subscribe it, share it. Uh, and don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to, to stay up to date with all the latest from your favorite mission driven food and beverage brands. And one last thing, we are considering changing the name from the Firebelly Social Show to something that is more specific to founders and to food and beverage. If you have an idea, hit us up. You know how to find us. Until next time, thank you again to Laura Jacobson. Amazing, amazing episode. Stay fired up, stay passionate. And as she says, become an energy giver because it's a very fulfilling experience. Thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. Thanks for listening to the Firebelly Social Show. 
We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.